Buenos días, señorita. Buenos días, señor. ¿Cómo han estado? Ya nomás, qué rosa más linda. Pero solo está perteneciendo en el jardín que no pertenece. Sí, pero bellezas como esta pertenecen a todos. What do you want? What do you have, señor? Ándale, Juan. ¡Súbete! ¡Vámonos! ¡Vámonos! What is this? My brothers, we were in mortal danger and we didn't even know it. Madre mía. And what we have here? Pretty. Amigo, vámonos. Andele, andele. And what do you have to give, lovely senorita? Mi hermano, to look upon her as a gift itself. You are music for my lonely soul, senorita. I don't hear any music. That is easily remedied, senorita. Juan, the guitar. Sí, hombre, cómo no. Senorita. Come. bird is frightened. I will not hurt you. Relax. what you want, let us go. That may take some time, senor. <laughs> Yes, sir. Like a room with a bath. Please. Yes, sir. Got one just newly painted. Cost you uh, $3, though. Well, I guess a man ought to treat himself to the very best every now and then. Yes, sir. Uh, by the way, have the Mendoza brothers checked in yet? The Mendoza brothers? Uh-huh. They're supposed to meet me here. No, sir. 
Nobody by that name is registered at this hotel. You sure? Positive. Well, they'll be checking in a little later. When they do, let me know right away, will you please? Yes, sir. Are you dining alone, sir? Unfortunately. And that's one of my tables. Looks just lovely. You better be careful, young lady. You're going to spoil me. I bet you're used to that. Now, let's see. What's exciting? Well, the pot roast is good, and there's a dance later. <laughs> well, now, maybe I better try both, in that order. My name's Sally. Hello, Sally. Soup? Guess I have to start somewhere. Jared? Well, George Akers. I thought that was you. How are you? It's Fine. nice to see you. Sit down. Thank you. Uh, have you had dinner? I right, just finished, thanks. Uh oh. Well, how have you been? Splendid. You? Oh, can't complain, I guess. How's the law business here in Baker City? Oh, last week I defended a drunk who kicked a pig. <laughs> How'd you do? I got him a light fine. Told the judge my client thought the pig was a mad dog. <laughs> when did you arrive? Oh, a couple of hours ago. To see the Mendoza brothers? Well, yes, as a matter of fact. Do you know them? Oh, I just met them very briefly. They said they were here to meet you. What do you mean, we're here? They left. They left? Uh-huh. Well, I don't understand. They were coming here to buy some vineyard land from me north of town. Where the devil did they go? They probably went back to Mexico. They came in a couple days ago. Looked at the land, decided they didn't want it. Asked me to tell you about it. Well, I'll be... That doesn't make any sense. They sent me a $300 deposit. What'd they say about that? They understood it would be forfeited. Huh. That's a lot of money. Well, I wouldn't worry about it, Jared. After all, you did everything you could to hold up your side of the bargain. Well, I suppose you're right about that. Oh, by the way, how's your lovely wife, uh... Alicia? Fine. She's visiting her mother in Kiowa for a couple of days. Oh, we'll be sure and give her my regards. I'll do that. Well, it's good to see you, Jared. It's good to see you. If you get caught kicking any pigs before you leave town, give me a call. <laughs> Well, Sally, thanks to you, I guess my trip won't be a total waste. What time do we trip the life fantastic? Huh? The dance we were talking about. Oh, yeah. Uh, hey, I'll bet you're real good on the dance floor, too. But I think I'm going to have to beg off. Oh? Well, to tell you the truth, it, it's been a long, hard day, and I'm kind of tired. That happened kind of suddenly, didn't it? Well, uh, I've been on my feet since 6 o'clock this morning. I, I, I guess it just came over me all of a sudden. I'll get the rest of your supper. Good evening. You mind if I walk you home? I'd like to talk to you. About what? Well, for one thing, the Mendoza brothers. Who are the Mendoza brothers? Oh, you don't know them? Why would I? No reason, I guess. Tell me something. Why didn't you change your mind so suddenly about that dance? I told you I was tired. Seems to me you didn't get tired until George Akers came over to the table. What did he have to do with it? Well, I don't exactly know. It's just that I've been getting kind of strange reactions from people around here every time I mention the Mendoza brothers. I don't know what you mean. I don't exactly know either. I was hoping maybe you could help. You're a nice man, Mr. Barclay. I appreciate you walking me home. But I make it a point to keep out of other people's affairs. You ask too many questions, you usually get hurt. Sally, now that's usually a pretty good rule, but I... I follow it. Goodbye, Mr. Barclay. Tom. 
I heard you were in town. I was wondering if you were going to drop by. Well, I guess I would have gotten around to it sooner or later. Well, how's your mom? Oh, fine, fine. Everybody's fine. Good, good. You know, uh, George Akers was saying that you were asking about those three brothers. Did you see him, Tom? Well, he rode in briefly, rode right out again. Just can't understand why they wouldn't at least send a telegraph. Let me know. Well, you know how the Mexicans are. No, how are they? Oh, well, what I mean is, uh, well, they probably got homesick. Decided to forget the whole thing. I wouldn't worry too much about it if I were you. Nice talking to you, Tom. You too, you too. Uh, Jared? I suppose you'll be leaving in the morning, huh? Well, I wouldn't bother you if I just hung around for a couple of days, would it, Tom? Why should it bother me? That's right. Why should it? Mr. Barclay. Yes, what is it? Dirk Sampson. How do you do? Just fine. Hey, wait a minute now. You better relax, Mr. Barclay. Are you going to end up with a hole in your head? That's a little better. And now that we have got your attention... What's this little meeting all about? Now, that's Sally. You see, Sally's my girl. And I don't appreciate the fact of uh, you walking her home the way you did. Now, if she's your girl, she sure keeps it a secret. You hurt my feelings with that kind of talk, Mr. Barclay. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I think the best thing is all around. Go home, Mr. Barclay. Go home first thing in the morning. And I'm sure with you out of the way why me and Sally, well, we would get along just fine. What do you think about that, Mr. Barclay? Hmm? Well, I guess uh, he agrees, fellas, because he sure ain't arguing. Let him go. Remember, Barkley, you're leaving. First thing in the morning. ran into an acquaintance of yours. What are you talking about? I'm talking about your boyfriend who seems to think I'm pushing in on his territory. I haven't got any boyfriend. Are you sure of that? Positive. Well, I I've only been here for a month. That's what I thought. Whoever it was m must have been drunk or something. Oh, no. Nobody was drunk. They were just using you to give me a little message. You must be imagining things. Now, listen, uh, Sally, I'm not imagining my ribs being kicked in. This town wants me out. Why? Listen, somebody beats you up. That's your business. The magic word is Mendoza, the three brothers who just rode in and rode out. You heard it. Where are they? I don't know. You're lying. No, no. Listen to me, please. You've been warned. I'll leave it alone. If you don't, you're liable to wind up dead. And that's the only thing that's going to stop me from asking questions. Well, then ask somebody else. I'm asking you. No. I'm mad enough, and I heard enough to keep you up all night if I have to. No, I want answers. Those brothers are dead. What are you talking about? They were lynched. They killed a woman. They raped her, and they killed her. Was there a trial? No. Where was the sheriff? He was there, watching with the rest of us.
didn't work, Tom. What are you talking about, Jared? I'm talking about the three you sent to rough me up. It only made me more curious. And now I've got the answer. Well, two days ago, George and Alicia were in their buggy about 10 miles out of town. Three of them pulled the buggy off the road and they started. They made her dance with them. Then when they started putting their hands on her, I went crazy. They knocked me out. And when I came to, Alicia was gone. So was the buggy. There were bloodstains on the ground. And I put a posse together and went out right away. But I couldn't find anything. Then the next day, the three of them rode into town. They checked into the hotel to wait for you. I guess they never figured the one man who could identify them lived here. Then everybody went sort of crazy. They, they grabbed a rope and, well, short of shooting every man in town, I, I, I couldn't stop it, Jared. I'd like to read you, too, a letter that was written by one of the men you hanged. Says Senor Barkley, we have heard of you and your family for many years in Mexico. The Barkley name is honored and respected, so we are very proud that you have agreed to sell us your land in the beautiful California. We've worked many years to save the money needed. We want to become citizens of your country, to earn the love and respect of your people. Now I ask you, does this letter sound like it could be written by a man who would do this? They did it. They held me and made me watch. I pleaded with them. I told them to kill me, but please don't hurt her. But they just laughed at me and said one filthy thing after another. Don't blame Tom. If I had it to do it over again, I'd have led the lynching myself. Now, if you gentlemen will excuse me, I'll say good night. Jared, you live by the law all your life. And so have I. I'm sorry this had to happen in my town. I really am. But I'm not going to blame myself too much for it. The whole thing doesn't make any sense. They say it happened about 10 miles out of town. About that. I just can't understand why those three would ride in here when they knew Akers could identify them. Now, what are you getting at? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I just can't understand why they'd kill her and not him. Doesn't add up. No, a killer never does. Especially by those kind. What kind is that, Tom? Well, those Mexicans, of course. Of course. Is Mr. Akers in? He's gone. Had to see a client. The man who kicked a pig? What? Never mind. I'll wait. He may be some time, Mr. Barclay. You know me? Everybody knows you. So it would seem. Mr. Barclay, they killed Mrs. Akers in cold blood and for no reason except to satisfy their lust. They deserved to be hanged. They deserved a fair trial. You 
surely don't believe those three were innocent. Mr. Akers recognized them plain as day. Yes, yes, so he says. It's just that there are a couple of little things I don't quite understand. Mr. Barkley, why don't you go away? Why don't you leave Mr. Akers alone? Hasn't he gone through enough in the last seven years? The last seven years? I didn't mean that. I meant that that the poor man has had a terrible tragedy and people shouldn't be poking their noses in at such a time. How long were the Akers married? Seems to me it was about seven years, wasn't it? How'd they get along all that time? I mean, was there any, any little trouble between them? I won't answer that. I think you already have. Maybe I had better come back at another time. As you say, it might be a long wait. What's wrong? Last night I was rereading this letter, Tom. Oh, now look, Jared. Now what's the point in going over it again? You've never heard the second page. Meaning what? Does Akers speak Spanish? No. But he claimed all three Mexicans spoke to him, right? Yes. All right. Now, this letter was written by the oldest Mendoza brother. At the end of it, he apologizes for the fact that he was the only one who could speak or write English. Uh, one of them did all the talking. Other two just, uh, just jabbered away in Spanish. I just figured it was because they were, they were scared or, or excited. Or they couldn't speak English. Uh, look, Jack, now why would Akers, uh, why would Akers identify them if they weren't the three who did it? I don't know. Possibly he made a mistake. It's also possible there never were any Mexicans. Are you suggesting that Akers killed Alicia himself? Kind of sounds that way, doesn't it? Oh, Jared, you're really on the wrong track. Oh, he was crazy about her. Why, oh, he showed her off all the time. I just had a talk with his housekeeper. She gave me the definite impression that there was trouble between them. Oh, she's an old busybody. Why, she's been jealous of Alicia ever since the day Akers brought her home. You can't put any store in her. And as for Akers saying that all three of them spoke English, well, that's an understandable mistake. He was in a state of shock when it happened. All I'm asking you to do is consider the possibility. That I hung three innocent men? Not likely, Jared. Not likely at all. You afraid to dig a little deeper? Now, how would I do that? Let's find Alicia's body. I looked for it. Then let's look again. Now, what'll that prove? I don't know. But if she was assaulted before she was murdered, that'll show. And if she was just plain murdered, that'll show too. You willing to face up to the truth? But as far as I'm concerned, I know the truth. But if you need proof... I do, Tom. And down in your guts, you need it too. <laughs> goes to Rock Creek. That's where Akers and his wife were supposed to be coming from. Uh-huh. You go up there with a the posse? I covered the whole area. Didn't find anything. You know, Tom, a fellow who might have murdered his wife isn't going to be likely to want the law to find her body, is he? Meaning he could have misdirected us. Meaning we better try this way. Looks like Acres buggy. Hello there. Where'd you get this buggy? Who's asking? Sheriff Hayes, Baker City. Sheriff, huh? Too bad you didn't come nosing around when the bargaining was going on. What bargaining? Three Mexicans two days ago said they wanted to trade that buggy. Three Mexicans? That's what I said. Just two days ago with this buggy. Which I didn't want. These Mexicans, what'd they look like? Like Mexicans. I mean, would you be able to recognize them if you saw them again? I'd sure recognize one of them, sitting there on that Palomino with one of them fancy silver saddles. I won't forget that one. 
What kind of supplies were they after? Oh, trail supplies, food, blankets, stuff I couldn't spare. I take it then you weren't exactly in favor of the trade. That's exactly what I mean. But this grinning Mexican had a gun, so there wasn't nothing I could do. You here to get my stuff back? Now, which way did they go when they left? South. Thanks for your help. You can thank me by bringing my stuff back. I sure don't need that buggy. Jared. They were the ones. That sounds that way, doesn't it, Tom? And I hung three innocent men. Now, how do I fix it? How do I live with a thing like that? They can't be far. We just get them, that's all. And what's inside me? What I did? Catching them won't change that. No, it won't. But it's a start. tell. I gotta get you to a doctor. No. No doctor can fix this. Oh, yet. sure they can. Oh, Jared. Oh, you just promise me you'll get it all straight. Ooh. You just rest easy, Tom. Oh. I'll get you some water. Someone right up. Nice to see you. Eat hungry? I could eat. Got beans or ham? Or both, if you got the courage. <laughs> A little joke. I ain't the best cook in the world, but I'm sociable. <laughs> I'll try the ham. Ham and spuds coming up. Get much traffic through here? I mean, other than the stage. Well, you might say I get about all of what comes through. Being on the only stop between here and Baker City. What about three men? Mexicans. One of them riding a Palomino with a fancy saddle. What about them? Did they come through here? What happened there? Bullet. Mr. Crease. One of those Mexicans? I think so. Look, mister. I make it a point never to get involved in anyone else's battles. I stay a lot healthier that way. They did come through here, then. You ain't hearing anything from me. 
Suit yourself. That's the way you feel. If you want to tend that arm, I got some astringent back here. It's all right. Taking care of itself. Hey, uh, you want to hear a funny story the stage driver told me this morning? Not particularly. Those three Mexicans. <sighs> what about them? It was yesterday they came through. Oh? Yeah. They were in a hurry. Bought some food, a couple bottles of whiskey. <laughs> I suppose they told you which way they were going. Well, they didn't actually make a point to tell me. Bet you heard, though, huh? As a matter of fact, I heard one of them say they were headed for the border. How much do I owe you? You didn't finish it. Oh, it's like you said. How's that? You're a lot better at talking than cooking. I said, on your feet. Senor, what is the meaning of this? You're coming with me back to Baker City. I'm going to have a little talk with the law. There must be some mistake. No mistake. We have done nothing except share the stars. It is true, senor. We're just plain vaqueros. Why would the law want us? For murder. We have murdered no one. No one except Sheriff Hayes and Alicia Akers. But you have come a long way for nothing. That's right, Mr. Barkley. Alicia? Yes? I thought you were dead. Who told you that? Your husband. He told the whole town that you'd been raped and murdered by these three. My husband lied. I left him. I went with Francisco willingly. And George watched me go. You went with them willingly? Three Mendoza brothers rode into Baker City to see me on business. Your husband told everybody they were the ones that stopped your buggy and murdered you. They lynched him. That makes no sense. He didn't want anybody to find you with them. He hanged three innocent men just to protect his reputation. 
You always did have excellent perception, Jerry. The gun. Over here. All right, George. Just tell me one thing, will you? Why'd you have to murder Hayes? I was sorry I didn't get you too, Jared. Then when you headed south, I figured you had an idea where these four were, so I followed. Is a reputation really worth all this, George? You think you could stand being laughed at everywhere? That's all that's ever mattered to him, not looking the fool. Appearing to be an upright citizen, a perfect husband and a gentleman. Only I knew different. Because when he couldn't feel that he was a man outside the house, then he'd slap me around and that made him feel really important. You've no idea what it was like, living like that. You had everything a woman could want. I had nothing. Oh, I could tell you stories. Once he went into a rage like a little boy because the mayor didn't invite him to his birthday party. He nearly cried. Running true to form. You dare talk to me after what you've done? After what I've done? What I've tried to do is get away from you. I asked for a divorce once. That was impossible. Not proper. The right people would talk. They might even ask questions. He said that he'd kill me if I ever mentioned it again. You should have killed him, my love. Your love. You did what no man can do to me. You. Nothing. Thief. Animal. If I am those things, senor, then you must be worse, or she would not have left you. <laughs> been too gracious. Now you can die slowly. And you can watch, just like you made me watch. Stay where you are! George! He's got the facts. Would you like me to ride out with you a little way? Francisco's waiting for me. Alicia, are you sure you know what you're doing? George made me feel cold and empty. Francisco doesn't. Simple as that, huh? Simple as that. Goodbye, Jerry. Mr. Barclay, well, what I did, what we all did, uh, the fact is we thought we were doing the right thing. Well, I've I only been here a month. You learn quick. What about us? You'll have to live with yourselves.
Buenos días, señorita. Buenos días, señor. ¿Cómo han estado? Ya nomás, qué rosa más linda. Pero solo está perteneciendo en el jardín que no pertenece. Sí, pero bellezas como esta pertenecen a todos. ¿Qué do you want? What do you have, señor? ¡Ándale, Juan! ¡Súbete! ¡Vámonos! ¡Vámonos! Bájese. Bájese. Ándale. ¿Qué es esto? My brothers, we were in mortal danger and we didn't even know it. Madre mía. And what we have here? Pretty. Amigo, vámonos. Ándale. Ándale. And what do you have to give, lovely señorita? Mi hermano, to look upon her as a gift itself. You are music for my lonely soul, señorita. I don't hear any music. That is easily remedied, señorita. Juan, the guitar. Sí, hombre, cómo no. Señorita. Come. bird is frightened. I will not hurt you. Relax. Take what you want, let us go. That may take some time, senor. <laughs> Señorita, buenos días, señor. ¿Cómo han estado? Ya nomás, qué rosa más linda. Pero solo está perteneciendo en el jardín que no pertenece. Sí, pero bellezas como esta pertenecen a todos. ¿Qué do you want? What do you have, señor? Ándale, Juan. Súbete. Vámonos. Vámonos. Bájese. Bájese. Ándale. 
<laughs> what is this? My brothers, we were in mortal danger and we didn't even know it. Madre mía. And what we have here? Pretty. Amigo, vámonos. Andele. Andele. And what do you have to give, lovely senorita? Mi hermano, to look upon her as a gift itself. You are music for my lonely soul, senorita. I don't hear any music. That is easily remedied, senorita. Juan, the guitar. Sí, hombre, cómo no. Senorita? Come. bird is frightened. I will not hurt you. Relax. what you want, let us go. That may take some time, senor. <laughs> Thank you. 